What's going on, man? It's Cool Water again with another podcast. Uh, I've been kind of out of pocket with it for a minute, trying to get some other things situated. So kind of got something to hit me. Um, and I wanted to kind of jump on it while it was fresh on my mind. Um, which case, you know, like I said, again, I, uh, been out of pocket, just been really taking care of a few other things. But as of today, the world has received news that former manager of NWA, Jerry Heller, passed away at the age of 75, I think maybe yesterday or the day before. And, uh, you know, that's not, I mean, it's, it's big news, but it ain't big news. I mean, you know, if he'd have died back early in the early 2000s, late nineties, it probably would have had more of an impact, but you know, he's an old man. Um, and some say he passed away as a result of him filing a lawsuit against the straight out of Compton movie. Cause he was portrayed wrongly in the movie, according to, uh, some publicists and, and, and media outlets. So, could be, I doubt it. You know, I mean, dude was already stupid paid. He was about worth 50 million. So it wasn't really an issue monetarily wise. If he did feel some kind of way, I think he just wanted the correction to be made with a check behind it. So I wouldn't, I, I'd very seriously doubt if it's one of those situations where he <clears throat> passed away as a result of just strictly, you know, strictly, uh, having a lawsuit on deck, you know, if he'd have been broke, he probably would have passed away from that. But I doubt that seriously. Uh, but one of the things that I thought was interesting, you know, they ran up on ice cube and, you know, ice cube naturally, you know, said what he said, which was, you know, I ain't popping no champagne, but I ain't shedding no tears either. Um, in which case, you know, everybody can understand from the point of view of the movie, you know, Cube got done wrong, you know, by Easy and Jerry, to be real honest with you. And, you know, went over the priority and them boys was doing him wrong, too, till he pulled the baseball bat out. So, <clears throat> you know, the thing that I think uh, a lot of these guys. And in and, and particular, you know, Ice Cube is. However you feel about the white boy. And, 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 you know, his dealings with you, the reality is a white dude was responsible for getting y'all niggas off the ground. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then when you hear, uh, Lorenzo, he had his story, you know, he was at one point I heard was responsible for introducing Jerry to easy. You know what I'm saying? Which, 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 which garnished and started the relationship that they built. So, you know, I I noticed Q, you know, he be throwing Jerry under the bus and that's cool. But in reality, I feel like, you know, them dudes got to really just, you know, they nod their head and say, okay, yeah, he did his job. He did his little thing to a degree. He was still shysty and shady. But at the end of the day, you know, if it wasn't for, for, for Jerry running up in some of these major labels, and then finding a major independent like priority, you know, NWA would cease to exist. Now, you know, you in the system, we talk about the music industry that's created and controlled by Jewish men, some women, uh, and they make their talent and have made their talent off the backs of blacks for decades, which was no exception with NWA. Jerry Heller, fine and easy and easy having the talent. Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, MC Ran, DOC, uh, Yellow Boy, and the list goes on and on. So it's a classic story. Uh, you know, Jew finds Negro. Negro got talent. Jews get rich. Negroes walk away penniless. Same thing with the NBA, NFL. You know, all that's on and controlled by, you know, the the, the 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 system that's built by the Jewish community. You know what I'm saying? Um <clears throat> but you know again, like I said before, man, it just one of them situations where you, you know you you 
you got to call a spade a spade. It is what it is. You know, Ice Cube didn't get to be as rich as he was just because he was able to rap. He, he, it wasn't it wasn't that, that 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 type of party alone. Somebody had to be pitching them songs. Somebody had to be getting them songs to the folks that was going to put them out. You know what I'm saying? I.E. Capitol Records turned it down. Then you got what Brian Turner and them boys over there, Priority. And they took a gamble and spent the major money to break them records and get y'all off the ground. And then that time went on, you gained a little power and a little clout. And then you got a little paper. And then you started to become a major player in the game. And I think, you know, everybody got to gotta call a spade a spade. You know, you ain't got to get a man credit, 100% credit. But at the end of the day, you still got to look in the mirror and say, shit, you know, old dude did what he did and that got us off the ground. So I think you may be a little bit harsh and still may be carrying some ill will, <clears throat> you know, from what went on decades past. And, uh, you know, cause I noticed he don't never say too much about Brian Turner and them boys after he went over there and dropped their baseball bat in the office and broke them TVs and, 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 and busted up them plaques. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in which case they got the checks right. But at the end of the day, they were still fucking so I noticed he don't really go off into that tangent because that was the catalyst that made him the millionaire he is today, dealing with them dudes. You feel me? Them dudes showing him the game. Them dudes giving him some of the background information on really how it is that the business and the companies is really ran because you know you wasn't just an artist. Them cats talk to actually taught you something in the midst of it, plus what you got from E. You know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, I think. I think Cube got to call a spade a spade and just really re recognize it is what it is. Dr. Dre's the same thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Him over there at, at, at uh, uh, Interscope with Jimmy Iovine. Jimmy Iovine was, is, is, is the catalyst that helped Dr. Dre become the multi <clears throat> mega mega millionaire, a.k.a. almost billionaire that he is today. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you, you, you'll never hear you'll never hear Dre speak ill a Jimmy Iovine, he'll speak ill of Jerry Heller. But again, Jerry Heller was the one in the background from media publications and news sources that was doing business with uh, Interscope, with Priority, and made some of them deals possible, possibly, allegedly, with Jimmy Iovine and, 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 and whatnot when Dre left NWA. Easy was still getting paid. Iveen and, and Hella had to sit down and, 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 and hash that out. Because, you know, these dudes is coming from the hood. They didn't have no real business acronym, man. You know what I'm saying? They didn't really know nothing about no business. They knew how to rap, write songs, and do production, mix, and master. And that's where it stopped at until they got fucked over enough and they started really getting their education like everybody do to get, you know, they get, they get they turned out. So, you know, it's one thing, man. It's like, it's like Damon Dash. Damon Dash hooting and hollering about you need to be a businessman. You know, you need to be an entrepreneur. You need to own, but you ain't leave no blueprint. And then you ain't really give up the real story is. The real story is y'all hustled until y'all found some white boy that let y'all in the job. Period, point blank. Once y'all start making enough money, y'all set up shop. At that point, y'all became power players in the game. You know, y'all had enough business acronym to go get, you know, your business license and call yourself a record label and get your little room and shit that y'all, you know what I'm saying, ran your company out of. But you had to go pitch and get into the system. And it was the white guy that was at the other end of the spectrum that gave y'all the green light and helped y'all become the mega millionaires that y'all are today. Jay-Z, a.k.a. almost billionaire. So, you know, you know, these dudes, man, you know, it, it ain't it ain't nothing against them. It's just that we got to take the veil off and the BS off the BS so that people out here can really understand how the game is played. Y'all don't want to say shit about the Jews because y'all don't want to give it away. It, it, it gives the notion that you did it yourself. Y'all not doing it yourself. Once y'all get in and y'all get funded and then you got money to go out and do your own ventures. Yeah. You know, then you kind of can step off. Now you be kind of have some equal footing. Just like somebody who was funding you in the beginning when you was broke. But at the end of the day, man, you guys got to you really got to come up and really be honest about the situation, which is what y'all not doing. So I think, you know, back to my initial point, 
Ice Cube, no matter how he feel about Jerry Heller, is responsible for him getting the foothold he is into the industry and him becoming the hundred and twenty and thirty million dollar dude he is today. Whether he liked the dude or not, you know what I'm saying? It's like having a bad relationship with your parent. They raised you. The relationship ain't good, but she still was a part of your growth, whether it was good or bad. Hey, man, I'm out. It's cool water, man. I just want to shoot that out there, man. Uh, look for me. It's hip hop dot com. Look for me. You know, Facebook. Cool water. One on one. Twitter. Cool water. One on one. Um, Pinterest. And uh, Google Plus. I'm all over, man. Holla at me. Peace and stay blessed.